Very exciting day. We're starting the video off with a new guest, 1972 Ferrari Daytona that we just finished. It's major Concorde detailing. This car has 23,189 original miles. It has been owned by its current owner since 1973. And man, has she a joy to drive. I only made 1,200 of these fantastic Ferrari Daytonas. This is probably my favorite Ferrari ever made. And I think there's a lot of you who would agree with me. This is one of the most celebrity-owned vehicles on the planet. Frank Sinatra, I believe Keith Richards, Mick Jagger, loads of other celebrities have these cars. Lloyd, our, I'm not even going to call him a detailer, I'm going to call him our magician. Lloyd spent probably, I think we have the hours about 43 to 55 hours, wet sanding every square inch of paint, polishing, all of the surrounds for the windows. We fixed the windows. We also took off the mirrors, the rear bumpers, fixed the front bumper. It had a little cockeyed up there. This thing is a joy to drive, and I hope we can open her up here soon and get that 350 bhp. I think, believe it is a 4.4 liter dual overhead cam V12. And it makes a symphony all original the way it was we have mats to protect the carpet original headliner we have covers that look like the daytona seats there's the original radio which uh you know as you already know does not work so fredo doesn't work very well either because it's an italian car and essentially shoots hot air at your face when you drive but that's okay all of our temps are looking good which is even more important no overheating oil pressure is real high Let's cut this rollers. Well, strange turn of events here. Um, kind of just conked out at the line in a very Ferrari fashion here. I've never had this happen. We just had the carburetors rebuilt maybe 100 miles ago. And now we're here. I guess it's working. I don't know. She seemed like she was running fine. All the pressures are good. It's not hot. Oh, the power steering. All right, well, we got power now. Let's get it. It's like the fuel pump's dying. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it's like the fuel pump just died. Oh, the adventures of classic motoring. Forget me in the meatball. All we need to do is make it, what, six miles? Temp is good. Oil temp is good. Oil pressure is fantastic. Amp meter is good. I put eight gallons of gas in it. Gonna have to get that fixed. Gonna have to send it to St. Pete. They're gonna have to fix it. That's bad. Not stressful or anything. A little bit easier when it's your car. After we just spent all that money cleaning it, now it gets to go right on back to get fixed. We'll have to show the owner. He'll love this video. I gotta put two feet on frickin' pedals, driving like a dumbass. Man, we're getting stuck at this light. I gotta keep the revs up. I'm having a big problem. It's almost like the fuel pump, when it hits a bump, it like shorts out or something. And it's not sending fuel through there. We made it back to the undisclosed location. This is all you're going to see. 
The Ferrari didn't make it back. It was not happy about it. It broke up a bunch of times and we need to send it back to Gabe and St. Pete so he can fix it. And that's all I got. Uh, how long have you worked for my father? 14 years. Four Damn, I'm sorry. Yeah. This is Lloyd. Lloyd's worked with us for 14 long years. Um, I don't know, hundreds of cars that we've had in here, worked on some of our clients' cars, worked on cars we've sold, improved many things. Thankfully, he's doing less of the intense engine detailing. You're more happy yes. about that than I am, but that's okay. I've been working on for the last, I would say, month or so is this wonderful yeah. 1973 Ferrari Daytona, and Lloyd is doing what we like to call a Concord level detail. This car was originally brown from factory. It was purchased by its current owner in 1973. It has about 32 years of red paint on it, so it was painted 32 years ago. And Lloyd is the first person to actually finish what they started 32 years ago. Exactly. And he is going to take it from here and show what Lloyd does in a day or what Lloyd has done on this wonderful Ferrari. Let's let him carry it okay. away. Okay. Hello, everybody. Normally, when you work on something that's been redone, you really don't know what you're working with. In theory, you, you have theories, but the whole thing comes down to you have to work it out panel by panel. This particular car required a lot of wet sanding because it had a lot of orange peel in uneven areas. And even when you did the uh, paint meter, you just could not tell how much clear you had to work with. So you would take up a sanding a block of uh, foam and they have different intensities. They're either soft, medium, or hard. Block that down and just smooth that finish out. Kind of a slow process because Again, you don't know how much you have. You think you might have, but you don't really know. So you're sanding and wiping, sanding and wiping, checking each step of the way, and it gets a little laborious. Anyway, this hood needed the most attention. The initial sanding I went into some light polishing, and then that revealed some of the uneven areas. Continual working this process to perfect this finish. You get down into areas like this and you have edges and ledges and here's edges down in here. And all of these get masked off so you're not sanding extra or you're not polishing extra. But you don't want to go through your clear. These headlamps, we, we flip these up. There's a trim that goes around this perimeter here of uh, rubber gaskets. And these haven't been cleaned properly in a long time. Most of the time, a car gets detailed, it's just a fluff. And we had gone to greater extent to try to clean this up. We had actually polished back in behind here where dirt uh, had accumulated. Polished these, this still has overspray on from the, the real paint. So it's not perfected like this is up here, but it still looks a lot better than what we started with. One of the next projects that we'll be working with is the removal of these lenses. The issue is, well, these screw heads, which would normally be screw heads, are riveted. So everything has to be accessed through the backside or the inside. And so it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, this one reflector light, which basically does nothing besides reflect and illuminate, $1,300 a piece for one of these. This one has a nice little prancing horse on it. Another thing that I want to mention is the Italians obviously didn't think this through here. Why they put rivets in here when you could have just put four little screws that perfectly fit would have been great. Now this job, which on pretty much any other car would have taken you maybe 30 minutes, is probably going to take us three hours aside. This is a little bit of a trial and error here, and we do have some experts that I can call to help us. Lloyd pointed out to me that there is a reservoir on this side basically hooked to a bracket, which is hooked to the reflector. Detach this reservoir. Hopefully it doesn't puke its guts out or do anything stupid, and then put it back on the car. As Lloyd said earlier, this is not just a quick job like somebody did yeah. to this car at some point or somebody did to any car. Lloyd is doing a job that's like extensive. This is a Concord level detail. We are going to the furthest extents to make sure that this Ferrari looks really great for the next 30 years of its life. This car probably gets used 500 to 1,000 miles a year, so it is loved and kept up with. It has been very well maintained during its life, but it definitely needed this sort of month-long process to make it so fresh. Lloyd had the whole car wet sanded. It looks like you're in a panic. I have some pictures of that. The car looks like it's flat red. It's got to look bad before it looks fantastic. Every little thing Lloyd is doing is extra step. Removing panels, cleaning behind panels, shining things up. Come to this door over here. The owner wanted his windows to work. They basically were like turtle slow. 
we have pictures or videos of it going up and down prior to that. Lloyd had to go in there, look at it. By the way, the inside of door panel on a Ferrari, let's just look at the outside. It's a lot prettier on the outside. Now, whatever conveyor belt type of wire system they use. Yeah, they had a wire pulley. It's terrible. Lloyd has even gone to the depths of just polishing the horn ring button because it was so badly faded. You know, that's what you see. You're sitting there seeing the, yeah. the prancing horse in the, in the yellow background there. You fix this door handle, has seen some stress. This door handle would not retract. It's a spring down in the bottom of the door. There's a stud that goes down in here about this far. It's threaded, so they have a lock nut that runs up tight, and then they have this teardrop piece of uh, copper where the cable hooks into, and that's what pulls this back. The teardrop piece had worked its way loose, and it would not function as to put it back in place. A lot of torque just to tighten it that fraction of an inch. Well, we corrected that with Blake's help. The other part of it is you have to take the whole door panel off. So that's yeah. why it doesn't look so tidy underneath there. Insert ugly picture of terrible behind the door. But, you know, I guess at Ferrari at the time, or in general, it was supposed to be the outside of the car that looked good. I think there are certain things that on any classic Italian car, we can make a bunch of jokes about their spaghetti wiring and issues that they have. But, I mean, it is a true work of art the car is. It deserves this attention. There are so many little pieces that require you to remove, replace, take off, just to get to something small like this door handle here. Yeah. This is something that gets a lot of use and a lot of breakdown. So what was happening before is this basically would stay out and the door wouldn't close all the way. That's exactly right. So it would, you basically hit it and it would just bounce back at you. Lloyd went down this beautiful door sill here. Is, uh, this is aluminum, isn't it? Yes, it is. It was yeah. all pitted. You get in and out of the car and you hit the bottom of your foot on it, scratches, blah, blah, blah. These are covers that look like the original Daytona seats. So it does have its original seats, which is very cool, I think, to the car's history. Another thing you do is mask everything. This is what people who do shoddy work don't do. They don't mask anything, and then you get wax everywhere. This particular chrome here, when you're sanding, you don't want to get scratches. So you you really should mask it off. That way it's protected. And now around the perimeter here, this is... Uh, gasket sealer in here so you mask that off also so when the car is being polished you're not pulling dirt out of this or you're not heating it up melding it you don't want that kind of heat on it to begin with but it's just an additional protection to ensure a nice finish is what you're looking for let's go to the passenger side is on this side of the car i've so i've been around this car pretty much monthly for the last three years in its collection I've driven it numerous miles. I've washed it a couple times myself. I never noticed this issue that Lloyd found, which was, was it some sort of rippling? It was the clear coat. The clear coat was not uniformed. Sometimes projects, they can run into issues and they may have to stop. They may have to fill up their gun again. This was done 30 some years ago. They may have just decided to put an extra coat of clear on and consequently it, it never really got finished. So you saw this kind of a haze, craze, rippling look. This also was perfected. I sanded this down a couple of different times to get it to look respectable. So yeah, and here again, here's the masking. Here's the little technique I figured out to hold this door lever back so I could actually polish in behind here. And I had to actually wet sand this because it had orange peel. If you don't sand that out, you're gonna, you're gonna see it. This right here, what was this up here? Was this like a faux vent area? Yes, that was a vent uh, that was painted flat black. And the issue was it was so tight in against this chrome that you could not clean the chrome. So we elected to remove that. Of course, that was an executive decision. We have access to this and clean it up real nice. Reinsert the vent, which is, it looks like it was aluminum, cast aluminum, uh, flat black semi-gloss black paint. Lots of companies support sort of Ferrari and lots of these parts are actually still available, uh, such as we are replacing all of these taillight lenses here. Chrome doesn't look the best. Some of the lenses have little scratches. They are probably original to the car. So we bought replacements of them for $295 each. And there are four of them. Uh, you know, Ferrari tax, that's okay. Lloyd took everything apart here. Badge, license plate light, license plate. A lot of people will just go over it try to wet sand around it, and that's when you get scratches on all these beautiful little pieces here, which we do not want. The point of the car is yeah. to be done over. And yes, Lloyd will be ceramic coating it, as everybody likes to do in the modern age. 
making it look shiny. There's another part to it. We took all the bumpers off, everything like this. There are a few pieces I could not find, like these reflectors. Maybe somebody knows where they are. I'd love to buy these, but that would be great. I could not find them out of three companies who supports Ferrari parts uh, to have nice ones. There's really a lot to do. I mean, how, how many hours do you have in it at this point, Lloyd? <laughs> a full week or more. <laughs> these kind of projects, they're, they can be testy at times, so I don't like to keep pushing my schedule. When I feel like I've had enough, then I've had enough. You start to, to move in the area of you're going to screw something up if your attention's not focused. It needs to be focused. Now here's one little thing that I've been doing for a long time, and maybe some of you already do this, but when I took this bezel off, you have to wet sand around the perimeter. Well, this is loose. So when you go to polish, you don't want this bouncing around. So just simply wrap this around like this, and I pull it tight, and then we go like this. And then we can sand, polish anything we want to on this side. And then when we need to do the other side, we just flip it around. That's the general idea. So all these things are done just to preserve the integrity of the factory, these sealants. You don't want your wool pads pulling this stuff off or dragging dirt out. When dirt comes and hits the pad, obviously it hits the paint. So if it's vibrating, this tape kind of keeps some of that dirt that obviously you couldn't just get with just a wash. I mean, exactly. there's always going to be some sort of remnants. That's exactly right, Blake. The vibration from your, your oscillator can vibrate and loosen little tiny sand particles that could work its way out and into your pad. And then you're wondering why you have other issues. There's a million videos on YouTube of how to detail a car, which is fine. We want to show you more of specifics to what we're doing on this particular Ferrari and what it needs. Just because Lloyd found imperfections, by the way, it is Lloyd's job to find imperfections and things. And he sees things that the average eye or the untrained eye would never see. And even me, who does this every day, will miss from time to time. You know, nobody's perfect, but... Yeah. Just because Lloyd found these things doesn't mean the overall quality is not there. I mean, That's the right. car was That's painted by Motion Products, leading Ferrari restoration shop out of Wisconsin. I mean, they were incredible at the time, and it still looks very presentable today. The paint turned out amazing, and I'm very thankful for that. Hats off to Blake, uh, because he's the supportive effort that allows me to take my time and to work out these issues. Without that, it, it makes it really tough next to impossible. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, Lloyd. Thank you for watching, and I appreciate your time. Yes, thank you.